Welcome back to this module on arrays. In this part, we'll demonstrate how to use arrays with functions. Our goal for this part is to use arrays with functions. We'll want to be able to pass arrays to functions for processing, and we'll want to be able to return arrays from functions as a return value. But since we always need to be doing our own bookkeeping, anytime that we pass an array to a function, we also need to let that function know how big the array is. So we also need to pass a variable value indicating its size. Likewise, any time that we return an array from a function, we need to communicate to the calling function how big it is. To get started, we'll write a simple function that takes an integer array and returns the sum of its elements. Here's our program from before where we sum the first 10 primes. We'll modify it to use a function instead. I'll start with the documentation. Now for its signature, it needs to take an array, which is an integer pointer, but it also needs to know how big that array is. So we'll add a size variable. N's not very descriptive, but it is frequently used in practice to denote the size of a collection. Now before we implement this function, remember that the first thing that you need to think about when writing any function is error handling. One error condition would be when the pointer is null. Now we could change this function's signature to return an error code and communicate the sum in a pass by reference variable. But it makes sense to return zero in this case because an empty array has no elements and the sum of nothing is zero. Now we can simply use the code from above. I'm using a different variable name here because we might confuse it with the actual function name. Now let's modify our main driver and test it. We pass in the array and the size of that array. Primes is already the identifier of an array, which means that it's a pointer, so we don't need to reference or dereference in this case. And it works. When passing an array to a function in C, they're always passed by reference. Like other pass-by-reference variables, it's possible to make changes to the contents of the array. Sometimes we may want to make changes to the array, but we don't always want this. We can add a keyword const to our function signature to prevent any changes to the array in the function. The compiler is able to check our code, and if we do attempt to make any changes, it'll generate an error because this promise is violated. I put promise in quotes here since it's really more of a design issue. There are ways around the const keyword that the compiler cannot check, so it's not a full guarantee. Let's take a look at our example again. First, let me show that changes are possible. I'll change all the values to zero before I total them up. This is clearly wrong. So now I'll add the const keyword indicating that this function will not be making changes to the array. This function violates that promise, so the compiler is able to catch that. Now we're not making any changes, and so we're fulfilling our promise. And the code works as before. Before we continue, let's write one more function to get some more practice. A function to compute the average of the elements in an array. C 
since this is an average, it may not necessarily be an integer. Again, we pass a read-only array of integers and its size. Let's go ahead and implement this. In fact, we can reuse a lot of the code from the sum function. Careful. As a review, remember that an integer divided by an integer only produces an integer. So at least one of these needs to be typecasted. Let's test it. And it seems to work. When I wrote this though, I copy pasted. We have about 10 lines of code here that are identical. The whole purpose of writing functions is so that they can be reused. Now we're utilizing that function. This is a much better design. And don't forget to test. We can also write functions to create and return arrays. However, we cannot return static arrays. Only dynamically allocated arrays using malloc can be returned. Let's take a look at a quick demonstration. Here I'm using the same visualization website from before. We've got a function foo that returns an integer array by returning an int star pointer. But what it actually returns is a statically allocated array, b, of size three, in which we set its contents to 10, 20, and 30. In the main, we call this function, but note that the values 10, 20, and 30 are stored in an array on the stack within the stack frame for the function foo. When we return, that stack frame gets popped off the top and removed and deleted. The contents of B are no longer there. So when we attempt to print them, we get an error. This is why I was emphasizing dynamic arrays before. Static arrays are extremely limited in their use. Let's quickly change this function to do it properly. Now the function foo is dynamically allocating the array. When we call foo, it's stored in the heap. So when we return and destroy the stack frame, that data is not lost. And we can successfully print it out. Let's get some more experience by writing the following exercises. We'll write a function that takes an integer n and returns an array of n integers, all initialized to 1. We'll also write a function that takes an integer array and returns a new copy of the array with all instances of 0 removed. Again, the return type is going to be int star. Our first step is to call malloc. Now, if we simply return this result, it's going to be uninitialized memory. There might be anything stored in that array. 
It could be garbage, it could be dead beef, it could be whatever was stored in the memory location prior to it being allocated back to us. In any case, we need to initialize it to one. In any case, we need to manually initialize every element to one. Now to test this and the other one, I'm probably gonna to want to examine the contents of the array. So at the same time, let's go ahead and write another function to print an array out to the standard output. Since we won't be making changes, we make it a const. We'll handle the last one separately for formatting. Let's test it. And there are 10 ones in that array. Now, before we implement this, let's think about this. It takes an integer array and its size and produces a new integer array, which could potentially be a different size because we've removed all instances of zero from the array. So we also need a way to communicate back to the calling function, the size of the new array. I'll do that in a pass by reference variable. Now our first step here is to determine how many zeros there are actually in the array, because we'll need that information to allocate the new array. At this point in the function, we know how many zeros there are in the old array. So we'll allocate a new array. Of size n minus the number of zeros. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back through the array and copy over each element as long as it's not zero. Now we have to be careful here. We can't use the same index variable because the removal of any one of them means that the index for the first array and the result array will not be the same. I'll use a different index variable here. Now we need to make sure that once we've copied the element over, we set ourselves up for the next loop. As our final step, we need to communicate to the calling function how big the new array is. Now be careful here. New array size is a pointer, a memory address. We need to dereference it in order to assign it a value. 
Let's test this. Now here, new size is a regular variable and remove zeros is expecting a pointer. So we do need to use the referencing operator. Let's test this. And it seems to work. I took that ones array and set two of them to zero and expected that both of them would be removed from the new array. I'll leave more formal testing as an exercise for you.